What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. We're going to use the Tunalizer to compare two XE Run V10 G4 13.5 motors and talk about what the differences are between these two, what will be almost identical motors when using the information that the Tunalizer provides for us. Now, if you're not familiar with the Tunalizer, this device is used to test motors as well as speed controls in many ways. It has Bluetooth built into it, so you can use this as like an OTA, so you can do speed control tuning. It has a port on the side that you can plug a speed control into to do bench top testing with the throttle. It supports 2 to 4S input and it'll test at 1 or 2 cell voltages as well. We'll show you all the cool things that it shows you on the motor. But the Tunalizer is a unique device. It has a regulator and like a speed control built inside of it for doing motor testing. So first things first, we'll pop open these two motors. So there you have it, two shiny new XE Run V10 G4 13.5 turn spec motors. I'll give you these a once over in case you haven't seen these before. These are fantastic pieces of hardware. The sensor port, it has the dual sensor port, one on the top, one on the back. So depending on your installation, you can see how that goes. Your motor tabs are all clearly marked ABC and you do have the adjustable timing up and down for more or less end bell timing, of course. We're gonna leave both of these as they are out of the package. Uh, I get asked all the time, what's the stock timing that they come with? And it's gonna be just right around 40 and some change, 42, maybe 43 type of deal. So we're gonna hook these up to the tunalizer and we're gonna run the auto test. And I like to do all of these at the one cell voltage. So if you go down here to test voltage, uh, you can set it to the one cell test voltage. You see you have two different test voltages there. And these, you can set the number of poles depending on what kind of motor testing you're doing. You can set it to two pole, four pole, even higher than that if you're testing like drone motors and stuff like that. And the reason being is to get the RPM information correct. Now this will work on non hobby wing motors. It'll work on any censored motor. It does sensorless testing as well, but the sensorless information is obviously gonna be a little bit different because it doesn't have the end bell timing or the sensor information or any of that fun stuff. So we're gonna take this motor set up here. So we'll get the motor hooked up correctly. A, B, and C. Hold this guy very carefully. You tap auto motor test and it jumps in there. It runs the motor at a couple different RPMs. And then it gives you this wonderful information at the end. Shows you the test voltage as a point of reference, the current that it drew over the course of the test, the KV rating, which is your RPM, the total end bell timing, as well as the individual reading of each of the sensors on the sensor board itself, so you can see how accurate that is. You get over the next screen, you see your end bell deviation. That does the math for you, the difference of the high and the low sensor. Your rotor asymmetry is how equally charged the rotor is, the north and the pulp the north and the south pole and the hall signal deviation is the difference in strength that each of the sensors saw during the test as well and it gives you the motor temperature as well if your motor has temperature sensors only the hobby wing motors have temp sensors so that's the only ones that usually show motor temp sensing so we're going to take that plug it into the data sheet and talk about it at the end all right we got it hooked back up or we left it hooked up we still got abc wait that motor wire moved and then we hit auto motor test and away it goes now a lot of times the motor, the numbers that you're going to see here are going to be extremely close but not identical and that's an attribute of how accurate this device is because as things change you're going to get some deviations. So take a look here at all the data again. Very close as far as the current and the RPM goes and we get over to our next side that looks to all be very similar as well. So we're going to plug this into the data sheet. That's uh, motor number one, run number two. So I did put one dot on motor number one and I'm gonna take motor number two and put two dots on it so that I can keep track of these guys. So we'll get motor number two hooked up correctly. A, B, and C. Uh, jump into auto motor test. It's gonna run that guy, a couple RPMs. And then we will take a look at our information. Same test voltage, of course. Current, pretty close. Everything's pretty close here. This guy has a little less overall timing, but still has a pretty decent RPM. You see your deviation, a little bit lower, but our symmetry is off more on the rotor. And then we have the same about signal deviation and give or take, same test temperatures. Punch all this into our spreadsheet. And we'll come back, do the motor test again. This is once again, motor number two, test number two. Oh, 
Okay, so there we have test number two completed. And once again, pretty darn close to the same as it was. Slide this guy up. And those guys all look really close as well. So let's go look at the data. All right, so we have all the data plugged into our handy dandy spreadsheet. And let's talk about what we're looking at here. Uh, motor run, or motor number one, run in one and two side by side. Motor number two, run one and two side by side. And you can see if you compare each of the runs to each other from the same motor, they're very similar in far, uh, as far as what the runs look like. And even when you compare them as a whole, they're kind of similar as well. So let's talk about what these differences are. Now, if you look at the end bell deviation number or the symmetry number or the hall signal deviation number, all of the time lower on these is gonna be a better value and that's gonna give you better overall consistency. Um, if I look here, I got very similar RPMs between both of them. I mean, you're talking 10, maybe 15 RPM spread. And what I have on the bottom here is my KV per amp number. This is something that I kind of made up. You take the RPM with a KV number and you divide that by the current draw and you get this magical shoot from the hip at a glance value that can give you an idea of which motor is giving you the most RPMs per amp. So in this situation, higher is kind of what you want because it's going to give you more RPM per given amp. And if we look at that, run two for motor number one is going to be our best guy. It's got the 3982, which is uh, the highest recorded uh, RPM here, and it also has one of the lower recorded amp numbers. So obviously the overall efficiency. Now, I did ask the engineer about my, my Charlie number, my RPM per amp number, and he says it's not the greatest thing because it doesn't tell you what it's doing under load. So as you were to use this data, like out of the data from a speed control over the duration of a run, you might be able to get some better information out of there. But this is, I just use it as a glance to give me a real loose guide of what I'm gonna look at here. Now. If I had these two motors apart on the bench, I would probably try the rotor from motor number one and the end bell from motor number two together to see if they made either of those stator combinations run a little bit better. So mixing and matching of the two different motor parts might be something to be worth trying here only because the symmetry on this rotor looks a little better and the deviation on this end bell looks a little bit better, so. Well, there you have it, folks. That is a look using the tunalizer to compare two identical motors to help kind of determine which one we might pick. And in this situation, maybe hard to say, maybe swap some parts around as we've been kind of doing in these last couple of series. If you haven't seen the tunalizer series before, I'll put a link in the description down below that has more of these videos of comparing different motors. We've been doing them with all of the uh, V10 G4s as well as the just stock motors in all the popular spec turns to give you an idea on how to use the tunalizer to help you compare. I'd like to remind everybody that we do have a podcast where we give away free Hobby Wing combos each and every episode. To find it, just look up RC Stuff Powered by Hobby Wing on your favorite podcast service, and you can listen to an episode to find out how to enter to win. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do feel free to shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. You can get in touch with myself or anyone here at Hobby Wing. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in. Another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday, right here on the Hobby Wing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time.